Today is summer solstice. That officially means it's the longest day of the year. But what are the pagan connotations? What are the spiritual connotations? What is the deeper meaning of the solstice? What are the ulterior rhythms and systems of meaning that underwrite and underlie our cultural systems of meaning? You know, of course, already that often pagan holidays are hijacked by monotheistic occasions. Easter, estrogen, the rebirth, the great power of spring to regenerate life. Well, what is solstice all about? What is its meaning? What does it mean to you? Let us know in the comments precisely how you celebrate it, if you celebrate it at all, or if you've become so detached from nature that you don't even notice stuff like that anymore because you're cooped up in one of the many boxes that the prison planet wants to keep you in and you're unable to access the limitless light that you are a part of and that shines down on you right now. As long as you're in the right hemisphere, and by the right hemisphere, I think I mean the top one. We're in the top one, depending on which way you look at infinite space from, of course, on a sphere, which can't really have a top or a bottom. And perhaps even those concepts of top and bottom start to seem a little bit ridiculous when you connect to the limitless. Let's have a look at how some people celebrate the solstice in a good old fashioned pagan manner by gathering round stones that may be an ancient sundial, may be aligned with constellations invisible to the eye at the point of their inception and construction. Stonehenge, who built it? The Druids. Nobody knows who they were or what they were doing. Let's know in the comments if you know what film that's from. Cultural, systemic and civilising influences by their nature have to repress our indigenous spirit. In order to make people till the land or tend to animals, you have to drag them out of the wild. Now I'm not some crazy Luddite who says that things were better when we were living in caves and standing by fires and had no access to penicillin. I'm simply saying that perhaps this is a time of true synthesis where we can look back to our anthropological origins and recognise that this time of of light, this time of alignment could be a time of inner light, of inner awakening also, where we could evaluate our cultural and civilizing influences and see which ones are valuable. Agriculture, industry, technology have all been used to aggregate and concentrate power in particular portions and particular strata of society. And awakened people that are in tune with nature, whether that's the rhythms of the sphere we live on, changes in climate are a threat because they can't be dominated by constructed systems. Let's look at what solstice means and what it has meant historically. So if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, today's the longest time of the year, a time when we're closest to the sun. The word solstice comes from the Latin word solstitium from soul, sun, and stitium, still or stopped. I like that a moment of stillness is possibly a time for a reflection and contemplation. If you mark this day in some way, it can be beautiful for you. Why don't you create a little ritual, a ritual of light, a moment of stillness to mark this moment in your year and send us images, send us photos or a clip of what you did. Sign up to our mailing list. You can email me at hello at russellbrand.com and I'll get back to you. Solstice is about celebrating the power of light before we start moving towards darkness. Remember, this is considered to be the Kali Yuga, a time of darkness where we are immersed in the gross, in the material, where it's impossible for us to see the fine threads of light that connect all apparently separate objects. So a solstice and the moment of reflection that it grants us is a perfect opportunity to look at some of the ideas imbued in that wisdom. Before the rise of Christianity, Slavic, Germanic and Celtic tribes celebrated the mid summer season with bonfires, believing they'd boost the sun's energy and guarantee a good harvest. It was believed that bonfires could also help banish demons and evil spirits. When you hear phrases like demons and evil spirits, you start thinking of things in a sort of superstitious, deracinated, dumb way. But actually, we're all aware that energy passes through us. We're aware of what are known as moods. We're aware of what's known as a cultural climate. And often this is because, in my opinion, that we cast into the shadow or cast onto the other things that we must own in ourselves. Festivals of light, festivals and rituals of awakening, of connection to time and connection to nature are one way of bringing forth sublimated energy. Following the establishment of the Christian church, solstice celebrations were often combined with St. John the Baptist Day on the 24th of June, the day of Midsummer's Day. Today is also associated with the pagan festival of Letha, or Litha. According to pagan folklore, evil spirits may walk the earth more freely at this time and in order to ward them off, people wear protective garlands known as herbs and flowers. One of the most powerful is Chase Devil, also known as St. John's Wart because of its association with St. John's Day. 
My suspicion is that that is a piece of Christian mythology that is used to negate a time of great power. Look at what nature is telling you in this moment, if you, again, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, that there is a luster, there is a fruitfulness, there is a power that is not a civilizing power. The symbol of the green man found in the culture of these islands, I'm in British, I'm in the British Isles right now, is the power of nature that we can all harness, that we can all harvest, that we can all use, cultivate, and is one of the few powers that could possibly oppose the civilizing forces of established power. Again, I'm not suggesting that we all abandon our laptops and go live in a meadow or clamber up in a tree instead of staying at a Sheraton Lagoon hotel in Bali. I'm simply suggesting that these natural Natural energies can be used to awaken dormant forces within you. So if you are depressed, if you are anxious, if you are unhappy, if you feel disconnected, if you feel like you need more love, more meaning, more purpose in your life, if you're sick and tired of a failing culture that wants you distracted and numb and dumb, then perhaps the solstice is an opportunity for you to look at your inner light and your outer light and mark your connection to nature. Because even if you are a materialist rationalist, you know that you evolved, your species evolved, and the species from which our species evolved involved all came from a harmonic relationship with this environment. You are the light. You are the Big Bang. You are a single cellular organism evolving in real time. By consciously and cognitively marking that, I believe we can unlock great power. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below what you think about the summer solstice, what you think about paganism, shamanism, mystical traditions. Let us, as the Celts, Germanic and Slavic people once did, acknowledge this period of the solstice with a tiny festival of light of our own. Have a wonderful solstice. Stay free.